Pastor Carl here. Welcome to the Daily Message. Today, I'm going a little different way. I'm going to call this message what Rahab has to say. Many of you know Rahab. She was the harlot that was in the city of Jericho. But I'm talking about this, looking at a scripture in 1 John chapter 4, and verse number 18, where it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And I believe that the love of God reached out to Rahab, and that should be a comfort to us. There's a great deal of concern, a great deal of fear, a great deal of anxiety these days. As the unemployment stimulus runs out, people are concerned about their jobs, concerned about being able to take care of their families. As uh, the uh, pandemic goes on and people are quarantined and uh, people are feeling lonely, there's a fear that grips some people. And even though these are unprecedented times, these are things, at least in my 70 years, I've never experienced before. We need to sometimes go back to Scripture and remind ourselves just how good our God is and just how faithful He is even in very difficult and very trying situations. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I always like to make mention of the fact that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but there will be emotions of fear. Uh, you could be a six foot nine person walking down a dark, a dark alley, and a six-year-old kid can say, boo, and most of us would still jump. Our hearts will still go uh, rise within our chests. But once we see who it is, then that fear has gone away, and someone might get a spanking for scaring us in the dark like that. So there is the emotion of fear. It comes and it goes. It uh, gives us a, a, a fight-or-flight response. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, something that would grip us, something that would hold us, something that would prevent us from living the life that God has for us to live. And he hasn't given us that spirit because instead he's reminded us of his love and how that love has been manifested throughout the scriptures. And one of the places that we see that love manifested is in this woman whose name was Rahab. In the book of Joshua, in chapter number 6, in verse number 17, Joshua says, Now the city shall be doomed, that is the city of Jericho. The city of Jericho, or now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. So Joshua is speaking. And the Lord had said to Joshua, We want to destroy everything in this city, and it, will, it needs to be dedicated to me. But there was one thing or one person, one family that wasn't destroyed. Because he goes on in Joshua chapter number 6 and verse number 17 to say, Only Rahab, and look at what he called her, Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Also in Joshua chapter number 6 and verse number 25, it says, And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her, fa her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day, because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Why was Rahab saved? Remember, Rahab was a Canaanite. The children of Israel were to destroy all the Canaanites. Remember, Rahab, as far as we can tell, had a very troubling past. She's still referred to as Rahab the harlot. But even though she had a troubling past, and even though she was in a city that was uh, uh, destined to be destroyed and everyone in it, she found favor with God. And I'm saying that because she found favor. We have favor. If you're born again, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have favor. 
She didn't have favor, but she still sought the God that she heard about. And so in Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 31, it says, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. This is important. The Bible makes it clear that not only did Rahab believe that the children of Israel who had uh, crossed the uh, uh, Jordan River and, and before that across the Red Sea had basically brought Egypt to its knees. Rahab believed that the God who delivered his people was going to take Jericho and was going to take the land of Canaan. And she remarked that everyone that was in the land of Canaan was fearful of them. But she was willing to do something about it. See, the Bible says faith without works is dead, being alone. But she had faith that was willing to work, that was willing to risk, that was willing to seek out that which she believed. And she believed that this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that this God was the God of the whole world. So she risked her own life. She risked being labeled a traitor. She risked that in order to protect these two men whom Joshua sent to spy out the land. It's interesting that Joshua only sent two. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't send 12 like they sent the last time. He just sent two. They told those two, come back to me. Don't tell anybody else you come back to me. But she hid them. But not only did she hid them, hide them, she was able to get a promise from them. And the promise was, if I hide you, if I don't say anything, that you will remember me. But then look at the heart of this Rahab the harlot. She didn't just say, remember me. Remember me and my family, my father, my mother, my uh, siblings. And they said, as long as you stay in this house, which we will identify because there'll be a scarlet cord that will come out of your window. When we come, if you don't mention this, we will rescue you. Neither the spies nor Rahab realized that the very wall that she was on, the Lord was going to say, when you come around the, the city of Jericho seven times, or on the seventh time you shout, the walls of Jericho will fall down. Well, she was on one of those walls. But there's something about the love of God, that the love of God is able to find a way. I think that's what I'm trying to share. We don't know what's going to happen with this pandemic. We don't know a lot of things. But I know that God loves me. And the love of God makes ways where there seem to be no way. Here is someone who's not part of the covenant of God, who does not have any promises, yet the Lord reaches out and he saves her, delivers her, and all that she has is faith. Because Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. She didn't have that scripture, but she lived out that scripture. And the Lord was able to bless her, bring her into the children of Israel. Not only to bring her into the children of Israel, but we read about Rahab in the book of Matthew in chapter number one. And Matthew, we have the, the genealogy of of none other than Jesus Christ. So not only is this pagan woman who's labeled a harlot, who finds herself in a city that's doomed to destruction, not only does she find salvation for her family, but somehow she winds up in the family of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because in Matthew chapter number one, in verse one it says, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, then in verse number five, it says, Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. And Obed begot Jesse. And if you know the story, Jesse's line continued all the way to David. Just that short verse. There's such love. There's such hope. Because not only was Rahab brought into the family of God, 
But Ruth the Moabitess was brought into the family of God. And not just brought into the family of God, but in the line of Jesus Christ, in the lineage of David. Now, what about us? In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 4, it says, By which have been given to us, listen to this, exceedingly great and precious promises. Didn't just say promises, but said precious promises. And not just precious promises, but great and precious promises. But not just great and precious promises, exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. My point is simply this. Rahab did not have any promise. Yet because of God's love, she was brought into promise. We, because of God's love, were brought into the body of Christ. And we have exceeding great and precious promises. So though the things around us are looking dark, I need to remember that God was able to bless those who did not have promises, who were not part of his, who were not under his covenant. Surely he can bless us. He can keep us. He can deliver us who are his children, who are part of his promise who find ourselves in the body of Christ. In Romans 8, 31, it says, What shall we say to these things? And it goes on to say, If God be for us, who can be against us? That includes this pandemic. Uh, That includes unemployment. That includes whatever we might be going through. Loneliness, it includes all of that. Because it goes on to say in verse number 32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us not some things, but all things? And Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 35 reminds us, therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. I just want to encourage us, that even though we may not know the answers, we know the answerer, and his name is Jesus, and he loves us. And the Lord has demonstrated his love in countless ways, even the people who were not his people. The love that he showed them made them his people. We are his people. Let's abide in that love. Father God, we thank you today We're just reminding us how much that you love us. And when we love our children, we do everything we can to provide for them, to help them, to guide them, to care for them. You, our Father, which art in heaven, you're the one that has given us those instincts because that represents you. So, Lord, let us not be tripped up by the enemy. Let us not be tripped up by our flesh. Let us not be tripped up by the world who would make us want to fear and, 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 and not remind us that perfect love casts out fear. You have that perfect love. We are able to enjoy that perfect love. Now let fear be gone as we look to you and we thank you for the love that you have for us. We thank you for holding us within the the, the hollow of your hand. We thank you. You said that our names, you've even engraved them in in the palm of your hand. So every time you look at your hand, you see us. We thank you for that, O Lord. And Lord, we, we thank you for being at work within your body. There are so many things that could separate us. But Lord, what brings us together is the love that you have for us and the love that we have for you. A love that you have said needs to be expressed in us being able to love one another. Herein is love, you said. Not that we love you, but that you loved us. For then you told us, by this shall the world know that you are my disciples because of the love that you have for one another. Let that love cross over racial barriers. 
Let that love cross over family barriers. Let it cross over political barriers. Help us, O Lord, to be able to talk to one another at a different volume, at a different level, a level that recognizes that we're all covered, who know you by the blood of Jesus. Help us to be able to love one another. Remind us, O Lord, that we as parents, when we see our children fighting, no matter who's right or wrong, it hurts us. And help us, O Lord, to remember that we have those feelings because they came from you. And help us to love one another as you have loved us. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. We glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hey, thanks for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And by the way, if you're interested in starting a house church, whether under The Rock, a four-square church, or under Solid Lives, our global discipleship ministry, then go to one of those websites and hit House Churches. Go to therock.com for The Rock and solidlives.com for Solid Lives. We'd love to partner with you to start a house church and to advance the kingdom of God together.